Welcome to EPG Patshala. Today, we will be discussing Module 23, Team Management in Library and Information Centers under the paper, Management of Library and Information Centers. In this module, we will be touching upon the concept of a team, what and how to build a team, team management in general, and role of a leader in team management, teams and their management in libraries, and utilization, merits and demerits of a team by way of exploring the concept and definition of a team and team management, team building and team management, what are the roles of a team leader, the manager versus leader discussion, application of team management to library and information centers, advantages and disadvantages of teams, and then we'll recapitulate. Let us now discuss about the types of team players. Successful teams are made up of a collection of effective individuals. These are people who are experienced, have problem solving ability, openness to addressing the problem, and are action oriented. In order to make a positive difference, teams should be constituted with individuals who are good team players to ensure the success of achieving set goals and objectives. In addition, the composition of a team shall provide for flexibility of opinions and roles to include a facilitator in the role of a process consultant, a practical, down-to-earth person, an innovative and a strategic thinker. There are some tasks which can't be done alone. Individuals need to come together to discuss things amongst themselves and work together towards the realization of common goals. This coming togetherness is called formation of a team. So let us now take a detailed look into the concept and definition of a team. According to Susan Heathfield, a team is any group of people organized to work together interdependently and cooperatively to meet the needs of their customers by accomplishing a purpose and goals. A team can also be defined as a small number of people with complementary skills who are committed to a common purpose, set of performance goals and approach for which they hold themselves mutually accountable. So what are the features of a team? They include, a team is a permanent task force or a committee. Teams are meant especially for conducting tasks that are high in complexity. They normally have members with complementary skills and generate synergy through a coordinated effort. We have seen what a team means and what are the features of a team. So how do we manage this team? What is team management? What is it about? Team management refers to the techniques, processes and tools for organizing and coordinating a group of individuals working towards a common objective. Team members need to learn how to help one another, help other team members realize their true potential and create an environment that allows everyone to go beyond their limitations. Team management typically involves setting team priorities and performance objectives, reviewing performance and methods employed and spearheading the team's decision-making processes. How do we build a team and what is team building about? As we said, a team is a group of people working towards a common goal. Therefore, team building is the process of enabling that group of people to reach their goal. Decision to build a team requires cautious analysis to study the level of complexity, interdependence, and objectives of the tasks. It is an ongoing process. Apart from identifying and roping in the potential team members, the stages involved in team building also include classifying the goal, identifying the inhibitors and removing them. Team building will lead to good communications with participants as team members and individuals. 
a team relies heavily on collective work products while single leader units depend heavily on individual work products there are some important points to be considered while building a team they are the team has to set goals and objectives as to why it has been set up the roles should be defined clearly and right team members should be identified once an idea is finalized what to achieve with the team the roles need to be identified that need to be filled and the type of people for those roles space for functioning should be ensured the budget hardware and software all these needs should be earmarked and the resources allocated guidelines should be formulated that will aid in working smooth the method of members working in a team should be well defined the value base of a team lies in interpersonal trust concern for addressing issues and problems the team members not only share expectations for accomplishing group tasks but trust and support one another teams require various resources and supporting conditions in order to be effective unless and until the top management is committed to making teams effective these resources may not be forthcoming when needed therefore a team is motivated primarily by its purpose for performance and depends heavily on collective work products there are many stages to build a team in each of these stages basic orientations are to be induced to the team members the basic orientations are orientation to goal and tasks and orientation to people and relationships let us now look at the four stages stage 1 building awareness and forming the group stage 2 facing problems conflicts and facing the realities stage 3 is cooperation and stage 4 is to concentrate on goal achievement in stage 1 the members are made known of the desired goals tasks to be performed by individual member achievement of goals to the achievement of goals is made known in the second stage of facing problems conflicts and facing the realities dealing with the feelings of people effectively becomes important to achieve clarity of purpose and overcoming other problems in the third stage of cooperation the cooperation can be made possible when individuals are clearer about their respective roles and understand different ways of achieving the group goal the relationship orientation is interpersonal trust a feeling of belongingness and collaboration to the group the fourth stage is related with generation of ideas decision making and problem solving this stage is related to performance and result orientation after the successful implementation of goal the group may review its performance which could be a good feedback for future in team building a leader needs to exhibit greater transactional skills in the initial stages till the team building outcomes such as awareness clarification belongingness and acceptance are clear later as the team matures the leader needs to exhibit greater transformational skills to bring about team building outcomes such as achievement of set goals and objectives pride and satisfaction however for all practical purposes a team should comprise of a healthy mix of individuals with different capabilities and capacities let us term them as a b c types of players human resource department plays a major role in identifying employee groups as the categorization will be based on the individual's performance if they exceed the set goals then they will be a players if expectations are met then b players and if unmet then c players this slide shows a table which differentiates the characteristics of a players b players and c players in a team Most leaders are highly motivated A players. They tend to undervalue B players who have a different world view. The A players are star performers. They are the employees who put their professional lives ahead of their personal ones. 
because they are striving to accomplish more or move forward in the organization. The B players are competent, steady performers who balance their work and personal lives while doing the bulk of the work of the organization. The C players are the underperformers who are not achieving enough to satisfy. Since the organization cannot have a majority of A and B types of players and ought to totally do away with C type of players, the organization should bear in mind that whatever teams are created for various tasks from time to time, a healthy mix of all these three types of players are balanced. It not only provides for good leader-follower hierarchy in the team, but may also motivate the underperformers to do well. Hence, to realize the highest returns on human capital, an organization must recognize who their A, B and C players are. So, we have seen what teams comprise of, what kind of players are present in a team. Moving ahead, let us see what are the types of teams that can be made available to organizations or that can be built in an organization. We can broadly classify the types of teams into three categories. They are functional or vertical, cross-functional or horizontal, and self-managed or self-directed. These teams can be used for different purposes like to create new products, complete specific projects, ensure quality, or replace the operating departments. Let us take a peek at what a functional or vertical team means. This is a team in which work is carried out within a functionally organized group in which people work together to carry out the same or similar functions. Functional teams perform specific organizational functions and include members from several vertical levels of hierarchy. In other words, a functional team is composed of a manager and his subordinates for a particular functional area. These teams are traditional corporate teams often coinciding with the whole department or part of it. And such teams are mostly suitable for developmental activity. What are cross-functional or horizontal teams? These teams are made up of experts in various specializations or functions working together on various organizational tasks. Team members in such teams come from such departments as research and development, design, engineering, marketing and distribution, etc. These teams have become popular due to the increasing need for coordination of various functions within an organization and to promote the exchange of knowledge and practice across disciplines and functions. In other words, a cross-functional team is a collection of individuals who are interdependent in their tasks who share responsibility. Cross-functional teams are particularly suitable for creative activities such as creating a new product. The main advantage of cross-functional teams is their heterogeneity in their technical background, age and values. These teams tend to have lower group cohesiveness and job satisfaction and high turnover. Such teams assist in planning and implementation. The third type of team is self-managed or self-directed work team. What is it about? These teams are one of the forms of team building in which a group of employees are made into a team responsible for a set of total task functions. They take decisions on a varied range of issues that govern the task like team morale, division of roles, quality issues, managing conflicts, planning for resources, etc. The employees or the team members have at most degree of autonomy and control over their immediate behavior. Self-managed work teams are known or meant for goal setting, shared leadership for team meetings, trust among members, individual and mutual accountability, result-oriented performance, and proactive nature in problem solving. It has the advantage of promoting collaborative work relationships among employees. These teams have the capability to think, 
innovation and pushing responsibility down to the lowest level. The self-managed teams also contribute to informal learning and teaching among its own members and they are known for promoting a feeling of ownership amongst the team members. Therefore, a successful team heavily depends upon two factors that is 1. The fundamental dynamics 2. The essential components and what are they? Let us take a look at them in the following slides. The fundamental dynamics that are required for a successful team to be built are team relationships, team problem solving, the team leadership and the organizational environment. What do they stand for? The team relationships stands for for a team to be successful, the members of the team must be able to give and receive feedback. Team problem solving means an effective team depends on how focused and clear the goal of the team is, a relaxed, comfortable and accepting environment and finally open and honest communication. Effective team leadership depends on leadership competencies. A competent leader is Focused on the goal, ensures a collaborative climate, builds confidence of team members, sets priorities, demonstrates sufficient know-how, and manages performance through feedback. Finally, the climate and culture of the organization must be conducive to the team behavior. For an organization to have a successful team and manage it to achieve its specific goals, the following essential components have to be set in place. A clear vision and mission, efficient leadership, right mix of team members, training and motivation and appreciation. These are very, very essential components for a successful team. Having talked about teams, their meaning, their definition and their composition and the requisites for team building, and the essentials for a successful team, it is very natural for us to talk about the kind of leader who will be the team leader and his role. What are the important points for his role and responsibilities? Let us take a look at it. A team leader is one who plays an important role in guiding the team members and motivating them to stay focused. He also sets a goal objective for the team. The team leader invites suggestions from one and all and discusses the issues in an open forum for setting the goal. He will make his team members well aware of their roles and responsibilities. He shall assign duties and responsibilities as per their interest and specialization for them to accept the challenges willingly. The first principle of team building is to lead a team effectively. A leader must establish leadership with each member. Most effective team leaders build their relationships of trust and loyalty. Team leader will be impartial and support one and all equally. As a team leader, constant motivation for his team members is extended so that they perform even better the next time. A team leader is someone who provides guidance, direction and leadership to a group of other individuals for the purpose of achieving a key result. The team leader monitors the quantitative and qualitative result that is to be achieved. He should be able to work with other executives to mobilize their cooperation and to leverage the capabilities of their organizations and their people in the pursuit of the objectives and fulfillment of responsibilities. Team leaders are also responsible for facilitating the information processing activities engaged by the team as it accomplishes its task. The most potent leadership processes that foster collective information processes include encouraging and coaching them to the team members to engage in problem identification, diagnosis, solution generation and solution selection activities. Finally, a team leader is a person who is a conflict resolver. He also owns the team's mistakes and attributes the success of a team
to its members. He is the one who leads by example. So what are the specific behaviors that are expected from an ideal leader? That those behaviors that would facilitate the team learning process. A team leader should accept feedback and ideas from others. He should be open to criticism. The team leader should also avoid person-oriented feedback. Rather, he should focus on task-focused feedback. That is, when giving feedback to the team members, he should not direct his feedback towards a person. Rather, it should be oriented towards a task. And the provided feedback should be specific, constructive suggestions should be given and it should be encouraging to the team members. These are some of the points appearing on the slide as elucidated by Tannenbaum and others. Having seen the formation of teams, types of teams and the kinds of team players and the role of a team leader, let us now look at some useful tips for managing a team effectively. Contrary to the popular belief, teams are not always the best way to get work done. Problems with coordination, competition and motivation can undermine even the most well-designated and expertly managed teams. These are some points that have to be kept in mind by every leader for effective team management. Have a naysayer in the team. Usually, when a team is formed, the group members are herded to think in a similar direction and perspective. Though this is good for the team's goal, it is desirable that one of the team members plays the role of a devil's advocate who can challenge the ideas of a group and it will avoid any possible pitfalls in the project. Keep the team small. Research shows that people's efforts quickly diminish as team size increases. This is because team members reduce input when they feel less responsible for the output. Hence, teams should always be as small as possible in which the goals and performance are measurable. This may mean including slightly fewer members than the task at hand requires, yet it is a desirable feature. Keep the team together. Established teams work better than those whose composition frequently changes. Though the idea of swapping team members is good from the point of view that every employee will get to learn new skills, Frequent changes or swapping out will diminish the effectiveness of teams. As children ape the elder's behavior, so employees also emulate what they see at the top. Therefore, leaders should visibly work together and even fill in for each other on occasions that demand such collaboration and cooperation. This is what is called modeling collaborative behavior. Conflict is a ubiquitous element of an organization that runs across the team as well. Conflict is not always bad. It can be constructive as well. It is imperative for a manager and a leader to identify the nature of conflict and understand its magnitude and gravity to address it effectively. Application of team management in library and information centers. So how do we apply the principles of team management that we learned in the previous slides in library and information centers. Management is related to make things happen, organizing people, meeting competition, finishing tasks and leading people. This is also a fact as library management is concerned. Management is different from administration. Management facilitates the implementation of policies and plans that are laid down by administration. Being a successful library team leader means identifying, allowing for, and managing personalities, differing work styles, organizational procedures, and management factors. Through effective planning and developing key competencies as a library manager or leader, he can transform a team striving for success into a performance-driven team that achieves excellence. The library functions include acquisitions, resource building, managing physical and virtual collection, and ensure smooth accessibility, on-demand services, retrieval, and dissemination of information. Formulating objectives and strategy, motivating and encouraging team member to accomplish the set objectives is the job of a librarian who is the leader in library team management. There are liaison roles, for instance, deals with booksellers, database vendors, library professional bodies, system specialists, and in-house committees 
are also taken care by the librarian. Technical skills are being displayed by librarians when vital decisions like identification and selection of appropriate sources for resource development, databases, identifying of useful books, serials, and selective multimedia resources or materials, and choice of appropriate library automation software are made. Managing human skills to function effectively with colleagues, peers, users, and management within the organization also forms a part of the leader. Team management can be implemented to maximize the use of resources in library and their value to learning, teaching, and research, and to ensure they are accessible and searchable. All organizations are complex systems. Depending upon factors such as the size, availability of other resources like technology and manpower, the team activity can be taken up. Various managerial systems and processes need to be designed in order to have effective team management and perform managerial functions, problem solving, decision making, communicating and leadership in the face of this complexity. Formal rules, policies, etc. are created for governing the managerial functions, process and organizational systems. The library leader has to plan decide, control, lead, devise strategy, and also manage change when needed. For application of team management, the organizational processes and controls, their features such as depth, flexibility, and complexity need to be explored. So how to emulate the manager in you? How do you emulate the manager to become a leader? For this, one needs to understand the management and leadership processes. What are the similarities and what are the differences between them? For instance, this table provides some of the functions of management and some functions of leadership. Management basically produces order and consistency, whereas leadership produces change and movement. As a library and information professional leading a team of library professionals, the team leader needs to play a role of manager as well as a leader. When it comes to managing the library team, the library leader has to play the role of a manager as well as a leader, imbibing both qualities and act as per the situation. This slide gives a table which shows the differences between a manager and the leader. One has to understand the differences and similarities between the role and and as said, one has to decide upon whether to act as a team manager or as a team leader depending upon the situation he is faced with. As discussed previously, teams are not always the best way to get the work done. There are both advantages and disadvantages of having teams. This table shows the advantages and disadvantages of having teams. Therefore, it is a choice of the library manager to have teams or not to have teams depending upon the tasks that are allocated to library. Having learned about the teams, the team building, and the roles of a team manager and the team leader, let us now try to recapitulate what we have discussed today. We understood the definition and features of a team. We talked about how to build a team and how to manage it. The four stages of team management. These were discussed, types of team players, and a healthy and balanced team, the creation of it, was discussed. We have also talked about types of teams and factors for a successful team, that is, the fundamental dynamics and the essential components. And we also discussed who is a team leader and what is his role. Then, we discussed some tips for effective team management and how to apply the team management in library and information centers. We then touched upon how to emulate the role of a library manager to a library leader and what are the qualities of a manager and the discussion about manager versus leader and what role to play when depending upon the situations. We also discussed about the merits and demerits of a team and having advantages and disadvantages of teams in libraries. Do you know some interesting facts about teams? A team is a balance of extroverts and introverts. This alone makes a good team. Most good teams have one analytical thinker on board. And all team members are not created equal. 
teams perform better when they include both men and women like minded thinking or diversity what is the bet we require people with like minded thinking and also diversified thinking and also an essayer all these are essential in a team and work in a team is never equally divided also we need to understand and emphasize that the me factor in a team is always diminishing and dismal when compared to the we factor therefore me is lesser than we you know the acronym team you can also term it as an acronym it's not a it's not just a word team stands for an acronym t for together e for everyone a for achieves and m for more it makes a team therefore form teams and perform and succeed wish you all the best and thank you